Uh, so in this lesson, we're just trying to get uh, a bit of an understanding of how derivatives work with periodic functions. So in year 11, you would have looked at derivatives before, uh, but never with a periodic function like this. Uh, you should remember, though, that derivatives really just tell you the rate of change or the gradient of a function at any given point. So if we look at this periodic function here, which you should recognize as a sine curve, and we look at its gradient at any given point. So if I move this a value here, you can see that the gradient's quite steep here at 0 0.94, but as we move to the top, the gradient gets less steep, less steep, less steep, until eventually when we're at the top, it's got a gradient of zero. And if we move back down, the gradient gets steeper and steeper, but negative this time, all the way to negative one when it's here, and then gets less steep and less steep and less steep until it's at zero. And this continues all the way through the function. Now, if we look at how we can graph that, uh, just with this value here, Now what this uh, B value here is doing is measuring the gradient of our, of our line as A moves along. So you can see the gradient here is quite high at 0 0.95. And as we move to the top of our function, the gradient will come all the way down to 0. And then as we move through again, you can see that the gradient's becoming less and less and less and less. Until eventually when we get here, the gradient's going to be negative 1. Okay, and this continues throughout. Now, this function that uh, we've created by essentially doing the derivative of our sine function, so here's our sine function, you should recognize here that this is simply a cosine function. So the reason we've done all of this, the big payoff is the derivative of y equals sine x is equal to y equals cos x. So that's, uh, I guess, lesson number one here. I'm just going to pause the video here and, and set up a new one so we can take a look at the, the I guess, reverse of this. All right, so we've already found out that the derivative of y equals sine x is equal to y equals cos x. Now, what I've done here is draw up another function. You can see that this is a cosine function. And we're going to do the same thing here. So you can see at the start of a cosine function, the derivative is equal to 0. And as I move through here, sorry, the, the uh, gradient is equal to 0. And as I move through here, the gradient comes down to negative 1. And then as I move through, the gradient is 0 again. And then as I move up to here, the gradient is 1 and back up to 0. Now let's put a trace on this and see what it looks like. Uh, we'll just turn our B value on. Turn the trace on so we can have a look at it. Now you can see that if I have a cosine function, and I'm finding the sine, sorry, the derivative of that, you can see it's going to look something like this. Now, it's a bit surprising. Uh, a lot of you were probably waiting to find out that the derivative of cos x, this is cos x, you were probably waiting to see that the derivative of cos x is sin x, but it's actually not sin x. So let's write in our second thing here. The derivative of y equals cos x is equal to y equals negative sin x. Okay, so you've learnt two really, really uh, important rules here. Um, if y equals sine x, y dash will equal cos x. And if y equals cos x, y dash will equal y equals negative sine x. Um, that's all we really need to learn from this lesson, the derivative of sine x and the derivative of cos x.